I imagine that's why, well, when we come here, we take a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and we just sit in stillness. Which you could sit in stillness, you could sit in that sense of being awareness, it has a, it has a, it, it, it enhances an inner stability. Most people totally misunderstand the real value of meditation. I like to think of it as silent sitting instead of meditation, because meditation implies that you're doing a lot of things. Silent sitting implies that you're silently sitting, not doing a whole lot, which is more to the point. But most people think that I'm meditating because I'm supposed to be achieving some particular state of being, right? Preferably some really, really extraordinary state of being, which you might, but, you know, as the Buddha told us 2,500 years ago, that it's all impermanent, but what arises will pass. It's the law of nature, it's the law of the universe. Whatever you experience one day, you will stop experiencing it some other time. No matter how much you want to sustain the best experiences, they're just as subject to the law of impermanence as all of their experiences. So in real meditation, we're not actually trying to create a certain state of being. That's a spiritual cul-de-sac, which millions of people have been trapped in for thousands of years trying to do that, right? But it's actually only to find this sort of stability. There's a stability in an inner stillness. That stability can be really very important when your mind starts playing games on you. If there's no stability, you're probably just going to keep losing balance, falling over, falling into your mind. Once you fall into your mind, it's much more difficult to find your way out. But if there's some inner stability, which is really what meditation is for, so you get this, again, the sense, the feel for an inner stillness. Not that you're trying to make yourself still. That's also a losing game, trying to make yourself still. That's a fabricated stillness. It's very brittle. It breaks very easy, right? You know the kind of, the person who's meditating and they're very still and they're very quiet and they seem very, very peaceful. And then, you know, they're sitting in their room and then someone opens the door and they're like, close the door, I'm meditating. <laughs> well, you might have been still a minute ago, but it's a really brittle stillness if it breaks that easy, isn't it? It's useless. It doesn't matter how still you get if your stillness breaks that easy, because that's a kind of stillness of someone who's trying to be still. Has anybody ever tried to be still? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a dollar for every moment. I used to try to be still. I'd be wealthy. So instead of, that's not, that's concentration. That's not meditation. It's not sitting silent. And it, it disappears as soon as your concentration disappears. This inner stability is starting to sense and feel the silence that's already there. That's why I often tell people, when you sit down for meditation, ask yourself, is it not still already before I try to make it still? And with the question, it elicits the sense of a stillness. It's already there. You don't have to make it up. It's natural.
It's already there. It's like silence. It's already there. You don't have to make your manufacture it. Just look. Is it here? Is it is silence here? And then you feel there is an inner quiet. And that's a stability inside. And it's a natural stability, which means that kind of quietness, that kind of stillness, it's pliable. It doesn't break just because someone bangs a doorway or disturbs you or does something that you don't like. It's something that's very flexible and pliable because it's, it's, it's part of reality. It's not something your mind has manufactured. So just because your mind moves, still, the true stillness doesn't move when your mind moves. It's the space in which your mind moves. And so there's a certain stability, and in that stability, then you can really look at things intimately, right? 